So in the meantime, here's some microgravity entertainment. Exactly. Uh, through the, the uh, spinning the uh, the camera around. Don't, nice don't try this in real gravity. Oh. It won't work. Oh, you'll break your camera. Yes, you will break your camera very quickly. But that's all they're giving us some some entertainment. Actually, he almost broke his camera there. He <laughs> did. Oh, we see the hatch moving now. They're opening it. It's going inside towards the the bill. The first face we see is a smiling face. And that's Alex going up. Opposing. Pausing for a moment. Posing for the picture, and now he's in. It's Alexander Gerst now on the International Space Station. He must be so relieved to get out of that Soyuz. He looks, he looks extremely happy, extremely happy. Not, not quite used to weightlessness yet, but it's going to come really quickly. And he's going to be followed by his two crewmates. So you see the inside of the of the bill, the upper part of the Soyuz. And the other two crew members are taking their time. They have a six months mission. They don't they don't need to a rush. A few more minutes they? here or there, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just caught a glimpse there. Uh -huh. of, uh, so who's going to be second? Any any guess, Richard? Well, it's going to be one of two people. <laughs> <laughs> so it you would be a real surprise chance. if it was someone else. <laughs> fifty percent chance. Well, I would say, I think it's going to be um, it's going to be Maxim Suryov. I think. All right. So I'll I'll could, I could be wrong. I'll put my money on on Reed. Okay. Well, well, we'll see who the uh, next one out is. We'll see if the commander doesn't go first. He might go and last. Unfortunately, it looks like the uh, the picture is frozen. Um, we are towards the the end of this particular um, stretch of uh, of coverage. I know of uh, live pictures from the uh, International Space Station, so it might well oh. be possible. Oh no! Hang oh. on. Yeah, it looks like we're it's coming and going. Uh, the picture here. At, uh, at Mission Control. It's quite possible we might uh, lose this visual contact uh, with the space station before we see uh, the other two emerge. But we've seen, we've seen Alex come and board. So, so uh, from a European we perspective. perspective. We've, seen, <laughs> we've seen the hatches <laughs> open. And it, isn't it fantastic that Alexander Gerst is the first uh, is, of the is. astronauts uh, to come on board uh, the space station. So just waiting for uh, the the other two to uh, to come on board. We have very limited amount of time on this uh, current pass with these live uh, television pictures from the International Space Station. So, so, and that's Reed Wiseman. So you were right. Second. I was just a guess, Richard. That Reed Wiseman, guess, uh, chance. NASA astronaut, now coming on board the <laughs> International Space Station. A big, big smile on his face, of course. This has been the smiliest crew uh, I have ever seen it might coming have been up the to the to the ISS. Big hug to Swanee because they're good friends. And we briefly saw the um, uh, some of the uh, the families at uh, at Baikonur. So that's uh, Reed Wiseman now on board the International Space Station. It's floating past the camera. Congratulations all round.
and now the Soyuz commander. Max Raev is, is yet to come through the hatch. That's the here we go. You see right there. And here comes the Soyuz commander. Last one to come on board. We hear, we hear them laughing on the loops. They're very happy to be reunited as a crew. Those six trained together. They're all good friends. Max arrived probably very happy to be back. And for the other two, first trip to space. It must be an incredible feeling right now. And an exhausting day. It's been a very long day, very long night for them. An extraordinary day, really, to wake up in Baikonur and then <laughs> to travel uh, at night to the International Space Station. And then, you know, that's, that's your day. And imagine when they wake up tomorrow or whenever they wake up, they'll be floating in space. Uh, it's going to take them a few seconds to realize that, oh, yeah, They've, they've, they're, they're waking up on the ISS. It was not a dream, and uh, they'll be able to enjoy the six months mission to in space. And all of them look very, very fit and well, considering. Um, we've seen some uh, astronauts arrive at the International Space Station looking distinctly not, not well. No, not because it's a, it's a long day. It's very tiring. You have to get used to weightlessness, especially if you're if it's your, your first flight, uh, the fluid shift, uh, the, the loss of balance, and, and things like this are not really easy to, to accommodate to. So sometimes it can be a little bit challenging. Uh, but this crew is looking, is looking well, is looking fit, uh, smiling all the way from the bus to the launch pad, from the launch pad uh, to docking and, and through the hatch into the ISS. And again, the uh, the pictures are frozen. You appreciate these have been live pictures from uh, from orbit. We only have a, uh, a limited amount of time in every in every orbit to get uh, live TV TV coverage, and uh, we're coming to the end of, of that particular pass of uh, of live pictures from the International Space Station. Of course, the space station in constant contact uh, with with mission control, but uh, these sort of TV pictures not always available from the station. But we saw, we saw all, uh, all three astronauts get on board uh, the space station, bringing the space station complement up to six astronauts now. Well, I should say, really, it's three astronauts and three cosmonauts. It is, it is. So although we've no longer got the, uh, the live pictures, you see the picture is frozen on the screen. Um, we're going to um, continue, hopefully, to hear some of the, uh, the audio from space and some of the, uh, uh, the exchanges between the uh, families uh, at Baikonur and uh, the astronauts on the space station. This is the view back at Mission Control. You can see that the ISS has now passed out of uh, the sort of main communication zone, if you like, which is this, uh, this red zone uh, on the map, and passing now down uh, over the Middle East and uh, down sort of the, I suppose, the uh, east coast of Africa and out over the uh, Indian Ocean. It's been a long day for the families too in, in Baikonur, we must say, because they've been following the crew. Um, it's probably been emotionally uh, exhausting for them. Um, they're probably worried quite a bit. Uh, now they're relieved, everybody's really happy, but that, that's when the fatigue uh, really starts hitting. Um, now they get a chance to talk to the astronauts uh, live on the space to ground and say a few words. Uh, from Baikonur, um, and then they can they can take some rest. They take they can take some well-deserved rest. After this, they'll have the opportunity to talk to them quite regularly. Um, we have video conferences with families once every two weeks um, for 40 minutes, 
and, and there's also the IP phone on board the space station. You can actually call down. Obviously, people can't call up to the space station. That would be that would be pretty funny. Um, but the astronauts can call down to their families a couple of minutes a day uh, if they need to. So not as isolated as uh, as they used to be in the in the days of the Mir station. It's it's actually getting better and better on board the the ISS today. And of course, um, Alex uh, Gerst, Alexander Gerst, uh, tweeting from orbit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, as well. Uh, he's at Astro underscore Alex if you if you want to follow uh, in orbit. Oh, and then we have live picture again. Oh, we're back with some live pictures. Live video. This is space. the service module. You see behind them a photo of Yuri Gagarin, a uh, couple pictures of Korolev, a uh, Russian pioneer uh, of cosmonautics, as they like to say in Russia. Uh, they're getting ready for the, the family conference. Uh, they have the small, you see the small giraffe uh, <laughs> flying <laughs> out of the screen. <laughs> it's actually very funny because that's what they use in the Soyuz. Um, it's their weightlessness sensor, if you like. As soon as they see it floating, they know uh, they've been inserted into orbit. And uh, that's very it's actually the responsibility of the commander to choose which toy to bring on board. And uh, since Max already flew once to space, uh, Reed uh, got to pick the the fluffy toy. I think he picked a giraffe uh, belonging to one of his two daughters, and that's what that's what this giraffe is. It's a nice symbol for him. It's going to be fun for uh, for his daughters to see a giraffe floating up there in the ISS together with their dad. More thumbs up. And that's the end of our launch and docking coverage for Expedition 40 to the International Space Station. The space Station now up to its full complement of six crew and East astronaut Alexander Gerst, ready to start work on his six-month Blue Dot science mission.